ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in Kurdistan in northern Iraq, I'm Charlene Boumansour and this is The Leader. This is the third episode in our year-long series, Let Girls Learn, where we're aiming to shine light on innovations and solutions that are helping girls to fulfill their right to education and healthy, productive futures across the globe. Once a month, we're hearing powerful stories from around the world. And today, we're in Duhok in northern Iraq. We drove 30 minutes through stunning mountains and dry lands from the center of Duhok, crossing two checkpoints to reach Esian camp, where the lotus flower has a community center. We drove slowly through campsites as people living here were starting their day. Children were walking to school with their backpacks and shop owners were opening their stores. There's over 12,500 people living here and a lot of them join programs like the Lotus Flower. Yazidi community is a minority that they are living mostly in Shangar. And those people, uh, they are not Muslims and they are not Christian. They have their own religion. That's Halat Omar from the Lotus Flower Center at Esyan Camp. It's one of 15 camps for internally displaced people in Kurdistan. In 2014, ISIS attacked their areas and thousands of people have been killed and kidnapped. Mostly they were women and girls uh, because they've treated them based on their uh, gender and their religion. They've been captured and even they've been raped and some of them they've got uh, birth and beside of that they've lost their relatives, their brothers, their siblings, their parents. So uh, this remained with them and it grows up day by day. It became a complex trauma for them. One of the girls at the center is 17-year-old Parween. Her parents were killed in a blast when she was just two years old. The memories of when ISIS fighters turned up at her door eight years ago still haunt her. I saw ISIS with my own eyes. They had long beards and long hair and they wore black clothes. They were big and scary. The first time we saw them, we all cried. My uncle told us to hide behind the big rocks and do not come out until they're gone. ISIS left, but after two hours they came back. That's when they said, we never want to see your faces again. If we do, we will kill you. So we ran away. Many of the women living in the camps have had loved ones killed by ISIS, like Ghazal, who is also just 17. I didn't see the conflicts because we were able to escape. ISIS killed most of my extended family, and only a few of them survived and returned back to Kurdistan. Months ago, we saw the remains of my uncle from the mass graves, and we recognized him from the ID that was on him. The Lotus Flower is an NGO that supports women and girls impacted by conflict and displacement. In these camps, these girls are given the opportunity to learn, whether it was a different language or a sport or a hobby that they're passionate about, like boxing or baking. This is a safe space for them to develop as individuals and are given the freedom to rebuild their future. <laughs> I gathered a group of girls and told them to start a boxing class. On the first day, there were 20. The second day, only two showed up. I asked them, why aren't the other girls attending the class? They said because of the stigma around women and boxing, so the number of girls showing up would fluctuate in every class. Nadifa is a boxing instructor at Rwanda Camp. In 2018, she set up a groundbreaking program called the Boxing Sisters to help women and girls recover and rebuild from the trauma of ISIS brutality. 
Nadifa herself is a Yazidi refugee and has fought hard to overcome the attitudes within the community around women doing an activity like boxing. When the girls were not attending the boxing classes, I would visit their families and ask them why they weren't coming. I asked their fathers, why aren't you letting your girls come to class? They responded, girls have nothing to do with boxing. I said, I want to let you know that if your girls knew how to defend themselves, ISIS wouldn't be able to capture 10 girls at the same time. I would notice during all of the classes, the girls would release all of their stress and anger into the boxing. Sometimes the girls would cry during the sessions. After the break, and even some of them, they were not able to, to get out from their homes because of the stigma. Uh, some of the family were thinking that uh, for women and girls, they have just like to work at home, uh, to not complete the education and so on. We'll find out how the Lotus Flower is helping girls displaced by ISIS with their mental health and education. Literacy rates among Yazidis, particularly women and girls, are typically low. The community has historically treated formal education with suspicion, associating it with repressive state authorities and the suppression of their language. When ISIS arrived, illiteracy made it harder for captured Yazidi women to escape because they couldn't read road signs or the names of unfamiliar buildings. Halad says that the lotus flower is not only trying to educate, but also give opportunities and change social attitudes. Well, then we've, we've been supporting them by opening small businesses to them, and some of them we've opened the literacy courses for them. Uh, firstly, before 2014, uh, they were not able to read and write and even some of them, they were not able to, to get out from their homes because of the stigma. Uh, some of the family were thinking that uh, for women and girls, they have just like to work at home, uh, to not complete the education and so on. Refugee camps are often thought of as temporary sites of emergency and aid relief. But this has been life for the 360,000 displaced Yazidis for the last eight years and looks set to continue for the foreseeable future. Since 2014, Padwin has been living in Esyan camp with her aunt, uncle and cousins. She comes to the centre every day to take part in the art, yoga, music and English lessons that the charity also runs. Education is so important to me. I study so hard every day, but as soon as I enter the class and start my exam, I panic and forget everything because of the anxiety and depression I deal with. Charities providing classes like these offer many a form of escapism and a way to cope with everything they've been through. I do not go to school. I only come here to attend these activities. The Lotus Flower has helped me know who I am and to have self-confidence. And I have learned a lot and I never thought that I'd learn to draw, but now I can. And I've improved my English as well as taking music lessons. I'm very happy when I'm taking yoga sessions. I just always feel like I'm alone. But after coming to these classes, I feel at ease. My mood gets better. I feel so much better being here. We take mental health sessions, art and music classes. Every class is helpful for us. The girls here are nothing if not resilient and determined. And Padwin has big plans for her future. My dream is to become a lawyer, and God willing, I will be one. And that's it from this special episode of The Leader. You can read more about this story online at standard.co.uk 
forward slash optimist forward slash let girls learn. Let Girls Learn will be back next month when we're in El Salvador. From Duhok in Iraqi Kurdistan, I'm Charlene Boumansour. Thank you for listening. Let Girls Learn.